Hi, my name is Max and this is the LaTeX Beginners course. In the last video we began talking about mathematical expressions in LaTeX and I think for the majority of problems you will probably encounter this will be enough. But if you are working or studying in the field of mathematics, computer sciences or any other things that, that, which is slightly mathematical, uh, you will need more than that. And the good news is that LaTeX can typeset nearly anything you want, you just need to know how. And that's the reason why we're making this video. And I want to begin with a thing that you will need very often, at least I use, I use it frequently, and I'm talking about brackets. So um, here in our new subsection I'm just copying some equation um, I prepared. It's nothing new, uh, it's just simple b plus c in brackets. And you see here in the document now b plus c is in brackets perfectly. But now let's assume that we don't have b plus c anymore now we have a fraction and then b plus c as a denominator and as a numerator maybe omega compile and what you see now is that yeah now the brackets are too small the problem is that these normal brackets don't scale automatically uh, so what we have to do is we have to insert a command instead an extra command and the command for these brackets for scalable brackets is uh, here for the, the left side um, backslash left and then an opening bracket and on the right side obviously right and then a closing bracket opening bracket it makes sense compile and now yeah, you see now the brackets are big enough, they scaled automatically. There might be cases where these automatically scaling brackets don't work out the way you want it. Um, therefore, you can use different commands in order to scale them manually. You can just look it up in the internet, but I don't think this is too important. From my experience, these automatically scaling brackets work out most of the time perfectly. Of course, there are also other kinds of brackets you might want to use here, for example, the square bracket. Uh, well, this is very easy. You just substitute here this with a square bracket, with an opening square bracket, and here obviously with a closing square bracket, and then compile. And you see now LaTeX uses the square brackets, also scalable. And this also works with the curly braces. Now, let's head to our new topic, matrices. So, in order to create a matrix, we of course need to first begin an equation environment and then inside the equation environment we need to begin a matrix environment. Okay, so here we are. Uh, matrices work very similar to tables, we're going to get to know tables in a different video. Uh, but for now it's very simple, it's just um, that columns are separated with ampersand signs and lines are separated with a double backslash. So for example, I'm starting with alpha here. Uh, this is my first column, first line, uh, then an ampersand in the second column of the first line I want beta, uh, and then the third column I want zero. Then I finished with this line, um, I'm going to line two. And then I prepared something for, for us here. Um, we have three columns, three lines. Um, so this is a three by three matrix and now we can compile. And here we are, this is a matrix. Normally we would want to have brackets around this matrix. Well, we learned to command a minute ago. It's just left and then opening round bracket and then right and closing round bracket of course and here we are here's our matrix with brackets around it now that we can typeset a matrix we can of course typeset a vector as well and this is really absolutely the same i'm just copying this and here the difference is that we don't have three columns we have only one column and i want a vector with one zero and one and then i want to say this vector equals r then compile and here we are one zero one equals r there's just a little issue here vectors as a mathematical convention always have a little arrow displayed above the letter and 
this is uh, in LaTeX um, accomplished with uh, an extra command and the command is vec and then inside the braces uh, we can say our letter which is R and now we have an R with an arrow displayed above it. Don't be intimidated by these special commands. You can just look them up in the internet, which honestly I just did. Um, another example from this matrix uh, is a uh, Huckel matrix, and uh, we can uh, say it equals H, but because H is an operator, we want a little hat on top of the H, uh, and the command for this hat is, fun fact, hat, and then the H. And here we go. Now we have our Huckel matrix. Now we have three equations below each other. And well, obviously they don't have anything to do with each other, but for now, let's suppose they do. So I think it looks a bit disorganized because here the equal signs are not exactly below each other. Um, and there is an environment that can help us to align these equations, the align environment. Uh, it helps us, for example, to align them according to the equal signs. So, how does it work? We can just begin a new equation, um, no, begin a new environment, an align environment, and keep in mind that the align environment substitutes an equation environment. We don't need this anymore. And now we can just copy the first equation, and then the align environment has two col columns and they are separated with ampersand signs just like you would do with a 2x2 two two matrix. Uh, so ampersand sign and then after this the equal sign. Then a double backslash to end the line and now the next equation and again here the ampersand sign and a double backslash. And now the vector. Good. So we can compile and here we are. Now we have our three equations exactly below each other. And I think, yeah, I think now these equations look a bit more organized than before. So yeah, the align environment is really nice and it can help you to organize equations, especially if they have something to do with each other, if they connect to each other, then this is perfect. This might not be the ideal example. And then you see that the align environment automatically enumerates our equations. If you don't want that, you can just use the align star environment and with the align star environment, these equations don't get enumerated. So, yeah, here you go, really easy. Now, let's head to our next topic, the cases environment. With the cases environment, we can type set piecewise functions, which we couldn't do without it, so it's pretty important as well, I would say. Um, we have first have to begin an equation environment, as we know it, and then let's start with uh, some function, f depending on x equals and then our cases environments so we say begin cases and end cases and then we have two cases let's say first case is zero if x equals zero and then a double backslash new line the second case a function might get inf t, uh, infinity so inf t if x doesn't equal zero, the command for the sign is neq, zero, of course. Okay, so here we are. And this should be now our two cases. Yeah, you can see it, you can see where we're going, but at the moment it doesn't look very good. So the first thing is that in the cases environment, there are two columns as well. And we can separate them with ampersand signs, of course. Um, so we can just put our ampersand signs here before div, and then uh, we should, yeah, now we should have a space here. So uh, this is the first step. But now the if is in the same font as the x, 
which uh, shouldn't be the case because if doesn't uh, necessarily belong to our formula um, just the x so we should use a different font and we can do this with the command text uh, just text and then if and we can use it here as well so this tells LaTeX that uh, the if doesn't belong to the formula um, and should be displayed in normal text and yeah here we, here we are but uh, now we should um, also have uh, a space between the if and the x and here we have a space but LaTeX doesn't recognize this uh, LaTeX doesn't recognize spaces in um, in the equation environment so we have to make a space uh, in a text environment and yeah now it should work so yeah here it is now our cases are properly displayed note that there's really a ton of possibilities for mathematical expressions in latex uh, and you can type in nearly anything you want but we can't cover all of it maybe in the future we will do another video about this maybe even a video series but for now i have to recommend you the literature you can just read a book or you can look in the wikibooks entry it covers nearly anything that is to know wikibooks is also a great source for looking up symbols but speaking of symbols i recently discovered a very interesting project i want to share with you it's called detaxify well with detaxify we can just draw any symbol that we might have in our head and then detaxify tells us if there is something like this we can typeset in latex and of course how to do that so for example, let's say we forgot how to typeset a simple alpha. Um, let's see. Yeah, Detectify finds here the normal alpha is just a backslash alpha and we can use it only in math mode. But there are also different options for alpha. We can use them instead if we want to. But now let's do something new. Um, maybe something like this. So let's see what Detectify finds. Okay, so um, let's say we want to use this sign here so this is the package we need to include i'm just copying this and then the command is math scr and then a g and also this is only working in math mode so let's do this include this package and then let's go maybe to our cases environment uh, and then math scr and then a g okay so let's see and here we are yeah now latex included the sign so this is working i think detectify is a really cool project and it can be really helpful so we are sharing this link with you in the description of this video so let's just take a short look what have we done today um yeah now we are in the math 2 subsection we can scale brackets and braces um, and we can uh, use special symbols. Um, we can include special symbols with the taxify. Uh, we can typeset vectors and matrices. Uh, and we can use the align environment and the cases environment. So I think this is enough mathematics for this basic video course. If you want to learn more, you can of course read the Wikibooks entry or read further literature. We can only encourage you to do that. Or you can just wait until we do a separate video on advanced mathematics. <laughs> Good. Um, now, on the next video, we will focus on an entirely new subject, which is including graphics and figures in our document. So, I hope to see you then. Until then, thanks for watching.